Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome uh, to our Zoom session for our to prepare our tridium for, for the Jubilee. We are happy to have uh, Bishop Emeritus, Archbishop Emeritus John R. Uh, Archbishop was formerly a lecturer in Penang College General when I was a student, which was, I think, maybe about 39, 39 or about 39 years ago. Uh, I've been a priest already 38 years, but before that, I think maybe 39 or 40 years ago. And uh, he was a lecturer. He was teaching us Bible, a very good lecturer, a good uh, professor for us. Uh, got to know him. And uh, he's retired and is still teaching in a seminary in Kuching. So we are glad to have him to be able to get him to share with us uh, to prepare ourselves for our tradium, our Golden Jubilee tradium. So we begin with a song first, and then uh, Bishop will maybe say something, and then after that, we will begin with a session. So good evening, brothers and sisters, wherever you are following this uh, Tridum talk, the first talk, the first evening. Um, how come, hold on, uh, I, can't, I can't get my slide going. Okay. So first of all, let me congratulate Father Edward the priests, lay leaders, and all the parishioners of Church of the Risen Christ, Tuapayo, on this very auspicious occasion of yours, the 50th anniversary, the Golden Jubilee of the foundation of your parish. So heartiest congratulations to all of you. And I'm certainly very happy and very grateful to be part of the celebration uh, when Father Edward uh, WhatsApp me, I think uh, was it sometime end of last year about this. Um, I told him, give me a few days to think things over. And I was, as I was thinking, thinking things over, um, what came to my mind was uh, the Stations of the Cross, you know, uh, the very old standard 
Stations of the Cross composed by, I think it was an Alphonsus Liguri, founder of the uh, Redemptorist uh, congregation. Uh, so the first station is announced, then we adore you, Christ, and bless you, and so forth. And then the meditation. So consider carefully, every station would have that. And in my seminary, minor seminary days in uh, Singapore, across the road, there was this uh, nativity parish. And for the Batol, would have stations of the cross in English and in Teochew. And in Teochew, this particular section would start, so I was thinking of that. And uh, <clears throat> then I thought, yeah, um, casually, sometimes I would talk to Father Edward in Teochew. So I was thinking in Teochew. Uh, those who don't understand Teochew, I'll give you a gist of it later on. So I was thinking about it and I said, so Singapore So I thought about it and then I said So I thought then I said my So I said yes to Father Edward. Now, the gist of the story is I hesitated when Father Edward uh, approached me. Um, but then I said, yeah, if that is the case, maybe it's God's call. I would just say, yes. Okay, so here we are, sisters and brothers in the Lord, uh, reflecting on what I've been given as the theme for the Triduum. Reflect, renew, rejoice. A bit of confusion here, but doesn't matter. I'm going to follow this order as in my slide. So tonight, I'm going to reflect on the first component, that is reflect, and then tomorrow night, renew, and finally, the final night, rejoice. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about anniversaries, jubilees, now these are all occasions to celebrate, no doubt about that. But we also experience the grace of God behind a celebration of an anniversary and more so of a jubilee. We are assured of God's blessings. And so when we look at the past so many years, and for you, it is the past 50 years, looking back, we can trace the blessings of God. And the blessings of God are there for us to experience so that we will face the present, we will live the present, and we will live the present with faith and with confidence. And we hope that our lives will be longer than just you know, in the present. So we look into the future and we want to move into the future. And because we have been assured of God's grace, from our past experiences, then we can move into the future with great hope as we live the present with great confidence. And so tonight, we'll talk about the first component of the given theme, reflect. And this is the point for this evening's talk. Now, when we say reflect, what do we mean? Reflect whatever be the elements that we want to put in must have this basic element of looking back. Looking back to the past. And that is necessary because we need, first of all, to be assured of God's grace, God's blessings, God's uh, accompaniment, God's help. And secondly, the past is always a lesson for us because we will have some achievements. We too will have made some mistakes. So the achievements will tell us how to move on and the mistakes will tell us what to avoid. So it is important on an occasion like this 
to look back, look back at what has happened in the past, what we have achieved, where our failures are. And so what do we reflect on? Of course, when we talk about the parish of the risen Christ in Tua Payo, we, re we look back on the history of the parish and we reflect on the history of the parish, the achievements and the failures. And so practically, we are reflecting on our experiences as well as our performance. Why and for what purpose? It's to see our strengths and to build on our strengths and to learn from our weaknesses, our mistakes, and avoid the same pitfalls as we move on. And the idea is for us to improve and to grow. And in the context of a parish community, it is to make the parish relevant. And to make the parish relevant, we must take a look at the challenges in front of us. And we want to meet these challenges, meet these challenges with our experiences from the past, plus also what we have learned from it. And meet these challenges from within, from within the church, the community, and from without factors, the challenges that come to us from outside the church from society, uh, <clears throat> from problems that we face in the world, and so forth. So challenges from within and challenges from without. And in the end, of course, as Christians, we want to be faithful disciples. And we want to be an authentic church, a church that is relevant, a church that is, that is sincere, a church that is authentic. <clears throat> and in that way, we can be the salt of the earth and the light of the world that Jesus wants us to be in Matthew's gospel, chapter five, verses 13 and 14. But we don't exist only for ourselves. <clears throat> we exist as a church. We are a church also for the world. And so we have a mission. And so our, our reflection on the past must gear towards what we can do, what we must do, what God is asking us to do in the world where we are. And that is the mission that we have been given. The mission that Christ himself has given to his apostles. And this we have in Matthew's gospel, chapter 28. Um, yeah, verses 18 to 20, yeah. <clears throat> And so as we look back, as we reflect, we are led to an experience of the presence of God, the guidance of God. And God's presence is such that when we are strong, we feel it. But when we are weak, actually God's guidance becomes stronger in our moments of weakness, because that's where we need him most. And so looking back at the 50 years of the um, parish, we will see how God has been there with us all along and guiding us. So in spite of the pitfalls that the parish faced, the parish still survived. And this corresponds very much to what St. Paul shares of his experience. It is when I'm weak that I'm strong because God's grace is always enough for me and God works even in my weakness or through my weakness. And with that, with that experience, we are ready to move on. And the parish has moved on until today. Now it is our responsibility <clears throat> to make the parish move on to the future. <clears throat> and when we talk about moving on, we are talking about mission. We must always bear in mind this great commission 
given to us by Christ in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all the commands I gave you. Make disciples, that's to draw people to faith in Christ, to draw people to Christ. <clears throat> and when they have been drawn to Christ, we baptize them in the name of the Trinity. And that is to make them members of God's family, to make them God's children. And that's the church. And then we teach them. What do we teach them? We don't teach them anything we like. We teach them the word of God. And we teach the great commandment given by Jesus, love. Now, these are basic things, very fundamental things that we, mu we must never neglect. Uh, I will go more into this um, in tomorrow's talk, huh? the, the four pillars of the community. But for the moment, I just leave it uh, as it is here. <clears throat> now, in, in order to carry out this mission, for sure, we need Christ. Without Christ, we, we don't even exist as a church. We need Christ for our existence, for our church. In fact, without Christ, the community has no meaning. So we need Christ. And Christ assures us of his permanent presence with us. Matthew 28, verse 20. The text that we had earlier on, the Great Commission. And Christ ends that commission. And for that matter... The whole of Matthew's gospel ends with this assurance from Christ. Know that I am with you always to the end of time. So Christ's assurance of an eternal presence with us. And now, how does this eternal presence of Christ, um, how is it realized through the Holy Spirit? And Christ made his promise to his disciples in his long farewell discourse in John's gospel after the last supper, after the, uh, yeah, the, the last supper with his disciples. He washed their feet, then he gave them a long discourse. And in this discourse, he says, I shall ask the father <clears throat> and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Another advocate, meaning there was an advocate earlier, earlier than that. And that advocate was Christ himself. So Christ was going to go back to his father and reaching his father's right hand, he will ask the father to give us his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is Christ's new presence, is Christ's eternal presence with us. <clears throat> So the Holy Spirit is a new and permanent presence of Christ. And it is experienced in the recent Christ parish of Tuapayo, for sure. Otherwise, tonight we wouldn't be here. So that's for sure. Christ's permanent presence with us through his spirit is there. And that should give us the confidence, the courage to move on to the future. Come what may. So when we talk about reflection, <clears throat> we're talking about looking back. And when we look back, then faith comes to the fore. Faith somehow emerges as something that is really shining. We cannot avoid seeing it. Faith is there, right in front of us. And why do I say that? <clears throat> because the parish has survived till now and will continue to survive. And the parish is not made up of um, people who are paid. Yes, you have some administrative staff who are paid, yes. But apart from that, financial contribution from the parishioners, this is voluntary. Then the exercise of different ministries, <clears throat> this is also on voluntary basis. The church operates on voluntary basis and still 
people stick on giving financial contribution, exercising different ministries as and when needed. <clears throat> this is all on voluntary basis. And it happens and the church still goes on. It survives. Not only survives, it thrives. And underpinning this voluntary service, <clears throat> there are three elements there. There is the faith of the parishioners. If you do not have that faith, that Christian faith, you wouldn't bother to volunteer anything, either to give donation or to give service. So your faith is necessary. And that faith in, <clears throat> brings, uh, brings to flame your love for Christ because you believe in Christ as your Lord and Savior. You love him. <clears throat> and because you love him, you love the community that he has founded. And because you love the community he has founded, you want to volunteer your service. You want to volunteer your financial contribution. And of course, at the end of the day, everyone wants to have eternal life. Sure, that's the goal of our lives on earth, to have eternal life. <clears throat> So we look back, and when we look back, we experience God's guidance, God's presence, and our faith becomes alive. And that faith that uh, motivates our love. And of course, we want eternal life. So when we look back, we have a lot of memories. Memories are good, they are also bad. And the memories that we have will help us to come to grips with how the parish has reached the present stage. And the parish has reached the present stage because of Christ's presence through his Holy Spirit. But Christ worked through our predecessors, the priests, the parishioners ahead of us. They played very important roles. If they had said, no, 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 this is beyond me, never mind. Uh, I, I, won't, I won't do anything because it's useless. What I do is only a little drop in an ocean. It doesn't help much. If everyone had that mentality, I think our parish would have collapsed. So <clears throat> the roles played by our predecessors, the priests, lay leaders, parishioners, now these are all very important. Now, quite clearly, I am an outsider huh? from Kuching, not from Singapore even. So I do not have um, any ability. I'm not in a position to do a factual looking back. That is actually the role of the parish priest, Father Edward, the lay leaders, the counselors, the parishioners. Huh? So what I intend, what uh, I have here is <clears throat> your own video um, which presents your theme song and also um, uh, scenes from uh, the past decade by decade. So I'm going to play this. Yeah, I'm sure you have seen it, but uh, it's good to see it again. Uh, give me a minute. It's coming. Okay.
So here we are, um, the church started as a building, but the community was important and the priests coming in different decades built up the community. And that's the church. The community is the living church, the physical building, that's a place for the community to gather and worship. So that was a gist of the history of the church by decades um, with the priests who are in charge in different decades, yeah? So I, I, I'm not in a position to, to, um, to go into the history of the church, but what I like to do here is to talk about the process of reflection, the process, yeah? <clears throat> this process has to do with looking back, of course, and looking back from the perspective of faith, I don't look back, I can look back um, at past events from different perspectives, but in the church, we take the perspective of faith as our viewing point, our, as our lenses. And for that, I like to take two types of memorial Two types of looking back, looking back in memory from the Bible. The, <clears throat> the, the growth of the uh, parish down the five decades. Now, that growth was the outcome of the pastoral styles of parish priest as, uh, the, and followed by the responses of the parishioners. So memorials are important. And if we have reach a certain maturity today, it is because of the work done by our predecessors. Maybe some parishioners are satisfied with what they have done. Some others may say it's not good enough, but there's always room for growth. And so the right attitude is important. When we look back, we are not looking back to criticize our predecessors, but to evaluate the growth of the parish, the ups and the downs, the uh, strengths and the weaknesses of the parish so that we can grow, we can mature. And for this, everybody needs to play a role. And when we look at that, of course, we are filled with gratitude and joy. Gratitude that the risen Christ and his father are always with us through the Holy Spirit. Gratitude to our priests, our past priests and parishioners, and gratitude to God and people, therefore, for their 
interworking. God works through the people. And that fills us, <clears throat> of course, with joy as we look at the parish today. We have inherited a great legacy. And that parish continues to be a, a platform for God's blessings to reach us. God is looking after every one of us through the shepherd, that is the parish priest, and today it's Father Lim, and through the leaders. So now I'm going to take a look at um, memories in the Bible. Biblical memory, or sometimes called memorial. Now, this is an important concept for the entire working of uh, salvation history in the Bible. It is because of memory of God's intervention and saving intervention that there is salvation history and it moves on from the time of Abraham down through to, uh, to Moses to the time of the judges, the kings, then to Christ and now to us. But we are outside the biblical times. So Old Testament, the memory is the memory of the Passover. <clears throat> And in the New Testament, Christ establishes another form of memory, the memory of a new Passover. We shall see that more of that now. What's the meaning of memorial or memory in the Bible? <clears throat> when we talk about memory, we are talking about mental recalling of something in the past. But memorial in the Bible does more than that. It is more than a mental recalling. It is a recalling of a past event that makes the past event present now without repeating the past event. I give you an example, but this example falls short <clears throat> of what the uh, biblical memorial is. Uh, um, let's say you take a look at your wedding photos. <clears throat> Your wedding might have, take, might have taken place like uh, 10 years, 15, 20, 50 years ago. You look at your wedding photos. Now, some of these photos recall certain very uh, sweet memories for you. And you are led into the, an experience of the sweet memories. The sweet things, the sweet uh, experiences you had, <clears throat> which the photographs showed. But you're not repeating your wedding so to some extent, this explains uh, the memorial in the Bible, but it doesn't explain everything. Biblical memorial is a mystery. It goes beyond um, what the example gives. Huh? <clears throat> so now we will consider the Old Testament Passover. That's the Old Testament memorial. And the story is what is given in Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, um, the photographs are on the right, they are blocking my view of the, the slide. Um, anyway, the time is, this month is the first of all the months and it's the first month of the year. And so Moses and Aaron were told to speak to the whole community to say on the 10th day, of the, I think it's the seventh month of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family. Sorry. Um, on the 10th day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. And if the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with, uh, with his neighbor, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, 
a male, one year old. You must take, you may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put on the do two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night, the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled, but roasted over the fire, head, feet, and entrails. You must not have any left over till the morning. Whatever is left till morning, you are to burn. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle round your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honor of the Lord. That night, I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I shall pass over you and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance memorial for you and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honor. <clears throat> for all generations, you are to declare it a day of festival forever. So we have <clears throat> the Old Testament Passover as a memorial. Memorial of what? Memorial of the 10th plague. Exodus chapter 12, verses 29 to 42 has that. And the 10th plague consisted of the death of the firstborn of every Egyptian family and cattle. Why this plague? Because Moses, God had sent Moses to negotiate, to bargain with Pharaoh for the liberation of his people, whom Pharaoh had enslaved for a few hundred years, 400. Huh? <clears throat> and the people were crying out to Yahweh, to God, and God heard their cry. God appointed Moses to go and negotiate with the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to set the people free. And God gave Moses the power to call down plague after plague, to break the heart of Pharaoh, to make him agree to let the people go. But plague after plague didn't work. Nine plagues in all didn't work. And so the 10th plague was a very severe one, the death of the firstborn of every Egyptian uh, family and cattle. So that was the Passover, the angel of death. When he saw the blood of the animal that was sacrificed, smeared on the two doorposts and the lintel of the house, the angel of death passed over the house of the, Egypt, uh, of the Israelite. And the firstborn of the Israelite family in the house was spared. So that was um, the the Passover that was commemorated in the Passover meal. There was another event that the Passover meal celebrated. After Moses had got the Pharaoh to agree to let the people of Israel go at the end of the 10th plague, the people of Israel left and they came to the Sea of Reeds in front of them. And Pharaoh, meanwhile, had changed his mind. And Pharaoh and his army came in pursuit again of the Israelites. So the Israelites were caught. They were sandwiched between the sea in front and uh, 
the army of Pharaoh at the back. So they were sandwiched. And what happened? God never had a dead end. God told Moses, stretch your hand, stretch your hands with your staff over the waters. And the waters parted into two columns with a dry passage in between. And the Israelites could cross through the dry passage into freedom. And as the Egyptians <clears throat> went into the sea, again, also following the dry passage, all the Israelites had crossed over. Moses was asked to raise his hands again, and the waters of the sea came back. And the Egyptian army was drowned. So this was another Passover. It was a Passover from Pharaoh's pursuit to freedom, to safety. So the Passover meal, which was commanded to the Israelites to celebrate as a memorial for all generations, commemorated both events, the 10th plague and the crossing of the Sea of Reeds. And this was not a mental, a mere mental recalling of the two events, but it was also going back to the experience of the two events without repeating the two events, just like the wedding album. <clears throat> now, that memorial, that Passover meal, that was celebrated in memory of the Passover assures the people of Israel, the Lord's protective presence amongst them. And this of course gives them a lot of joy for sure. And a lot of confidence to face the present. So they went through the wilderness with great confidence that the Lord was there to guide them to the promised land. So that's the first Passover in the Bible, the Old Testament Passover that was celebrated in memory of two big past, uh, big events in the past, the uh, tenth plague, as well as the crossing of the Sea of Reeds. Then in the New Testament, <clears throat> Jesus instituted the Eucharist also as a memory. And he instituted the Eucharist at the Last Supper. We have the story um, from Luke chapter 22, verses 14 to 20. <clears throat> when the hour came, he took his place at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have longed to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Because I tell you, I shall not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> then taking a cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and share it among you. Because from now on, I, will, I tell you, I shall not drink wine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took some bread and when he had given thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which will be given for you. Do this as a memorial of me. He did the same with the cup of the supper and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which will be poured out for you. Now, do this as a memorial of me. Celebrate the Eucharist as a memory of me. And today, in our Eucharist, this institution narrative is an essential part of our celebration. The priest taking up the host says, take this and eat it, this is my body. The priest taking up the chalice of wine says, Take and drink from it. This is my blood. And Jesus says, do this in memorial of me. So every time we celebrate the Eucharist, we are remembering Christ's Passover. Do this as a memorial of me. Following Christ's command. And Christ not only gives a command, he also gives the power to his apostles to celebrate the Eucharist. <clears throat> Now, the Last Supper 
that is the last supper Jesus had with his disciples. It was actually um, a celebration of the uh, Passover meal, the, the Old Testament Passover meal. But Jesus transformed two things. One, he didn't celebrate it when the Jews celebrated the uh, Passover, the Passover meal, and that normally was a Saturday. Um, sorry, uh, fri Friday evening. Yeah, Friday evening. Because for the Jew, for the Jews, the day was from sunset to sunset. So it's Friday evening. They would celebrate that. And on Friday, during the day, they would slaughter the lamb of the Passover. So Jesus celebrated the Last Supper an evening before, because it was the following day, he was arrested, tried, and crucified. And his crucifixion would be timed together with the slaughtering of the, the Passover lamb. So Jesus then became the new Passover lamb. And in the Eucharist, he also introduced one, uh, one change. He took the bread and the wine and changed that into his own body and blood. And so Jesus in the Eucharist is celebrated as the new Passover lamb. Celebrated, but his slaughter took place on the cross. Jesus on the cross was a new Passover lamb. His body was broken. His blood was shed for forgiveness, forgiveness of sins. And then in the Eucharist, that is commemorated. And his body and his blood in the form of bread and wine are offered to us as the new Passover lamb for us to eat and drink. And his blood would, would, would be like the uh, blood of the lamb smeared on the doorposts and the lintel of the houses of the, the Jews. The blood of Christ is also the blood that saves all of us from death. And this is eternal death. Jesus did not only die, death was not the end, he rose to life. And that's the new exodus for us. Jesus crossed over from this earth to the next life, from this earth to his father's right hand. And that's the new exodus. And in that new exodus, Jesus brought for all of us a new liberation, a new life. And this life is eternal life. And so the Eucharist as memorial makes the death and resurrection of Jesus present to us whenever we celebrate the Eucharist without repeating the death and resurrection of Christ, without re-crucifying Christ, without Christ re-rising from the dead. It leads us to an experience of that liberation that Jesus came to bring to all of us through his death and resurrection. And what does that liberation consist of? Two things. When Jesus was crucified, he took your place, he took my place to pay the death penalty that actually was due to us because of our sins. So Jesus took our place to die on our behalf. And with that, he brought about forgiveness of sins. Then Jesus rose to life. And with that, he bestowed eternal life. When our sins have been forgiven, then we are disposed to receive eternal life. And that is made possible, of course, by Jesus on the cross and with his resurrection, but now by the power of the spirit. So what do we have then? What are the sentiments we have in our hearts when we celebrate a memorial in the Eucharist, the memorial of Christ? Gratitude. In fact, the word Eucharist in Greek means thanksgiving. So when we celebrate the Eucharist, we celebrate it with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanksgiving for what? For the forgiveness of sins and for eternal life, for our liberation, for our salvation. 
And when we experience that, of course, there is joy in our hearts as well, because we experience our salvation. <clears throat> and that throws light. That has a bearing on our reflection. Our reflection, our looking back over the past 50 years of our parish. Now, what significance does that looking back have now? Now, in the light of the Old Testament memorial, in the light of the New Testament memorial, the Old Testament Passover, the uh, New Testament Eucharist, in the light of that as a memorial, then our reflection is more than just a looking back. It is a looking back in which we experience the past in the present. So like just now, uh, what the video clip shows us, the church at its beginning when uh, the church building was being put up, etc. When we reflect, when we look back on that, then we are led into the very beginnings of the parish and God was there. And being led into an experience of how the church started and grew, then we are able to integrate that history of the church into our present reality. There is no present now for us without the past. And we integrate the two. And as we do so, then we experience the presence of God, God's unfailing presence. And God is not just there passively present. He guides us. He guided the priests and the leaders and the parishioners of the past to do what they felt was necessary, was important. So God was there to guide them, to protect them, and to provide for whatever they needed to put up first the physical building, then to build up the community. And that assurance of God's presence, that assurance of God's active presence and providence now gives us the confidence to face the present. Whatever be the challenges we face today, we have the confidence to face it because God is with us. And God is with us through the Spirit and the Spirit empowers us to shoulder responsibilities just as he empowered whichever priest started to build this church. And then the spirit also empowers us to take the parish forward, just like our predecessors. They've taken the parish to today and we are part of it today. And the spirit empowers us to make this parish grow in faith and love as the priests and the past parishioners have done. So the risen Christ is with us in the parish, the parish of the risen Christ. And the risen Christ is present with us through his Holy Spirit. And we can only join our blessed mother to glorify the Lord for the many blessings from the Lord that we have received. We think of the masses and the sacraments that have been celebrated in, um, in the church. And all these were reflected in the video clip. We also <clears throat> receive a lot of spiritual strength from God through the parish, consolation from God, hope from God, we receive all these blessings from the Lord through the parish. So we join our Blessed Mother to glorify the Lord as we are eternally grateful to him for yes, who have marvels for us and holy is his name. And now I invite you as um, I screen uh, the slides, I invite you to join our Blessed Mother in reciting or if you want to sing uh, the Magnificat, yeah? The words are there. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He looks on his servant in her lowliness. Henceforth, 
all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me, holy his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy. The mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his sons forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So good night, brothers and sisters, and see you tomorrow evening. Good night. Thank you. So thank you, uh, Bishop Emeritus, for the sharing. In, uh, for us to reflect and reminding us about the Christ, uh, the center of our life is something very important and also appreciating what we had in the past. So I guess uh, once you see the magazine, you will also understand better how the parish came, came about. Uh, during this weekend, we will give the magazine and the rest of the souvenirs and for everybody. And uh, you will remember of the past and where do we stand now. Okay, so thank you very much. We, Hope you come back with us tomorrow. Bishop will continue to talk to us uh, about uh, renew this time, renew uh, of renewal of the church. Okay, so thank you very much, and hope to see you tomorrow. And good night. Yeah. Okay. Good night, everybody. God bless. Keep safe. Huh? God bless. Good night. <laughs>